everybody, welcome to the show. This is a show about, it's about making mistakes. Big mistakes. Well, it could be little mistakes too, but but at the time they seem like big mistakes and then like maybe like a year later you're like, ha 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 ha. I'm so glad I lived through that. Tonight, we're going to be talking to, we're going to be talking to Jack Sanders. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. We're getting started early, don't you? <laughs> oh, we're getting started for real. Tonight, we're gonna get <laughs> up with Thunder and Sanders. That's with a P in front. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to the show. Wow, this smells good. Yeah, cilantro. Oh, cilantro. Yeah. <laughs> cilantro, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> Already drug. <laughs> tonight, uh, tonight is Jack Sanders. Hey, woo, woo, woo. You do so many different things that I don't know what business or what, I think we just talk about you as an entity, but like you have, you have many side hustles. You have a core business that you focus on other than this show, of course. <laughs> like what would be your core business? What's the name of your core business? Uh, Erudite and Stone. Um, check me out, Drink Science on Instagram, <laughs> underscore between drink and science. Uh, but Eris Dighton Stone is my, is my company. Uh, as I uh, carved and trailblazed new paths, um, in this case, Eris Dighton Stone is a very much cannabis-centric company. I okay. do cannabis design, I do branding for cannabis companies, I make cocktails, special event facilitation. Like if it has to do with cannabis. If it has to do with cannabis, that's erudite and stone. Okay. The learned, erudite, and stoned. Stoned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like? St Educated and elevated. Oh. I actually once won a Scrabble game over 700 points. My final word, and I'd been saving this many a turn, was erudite. Erudite. Seven You're letters. slowly piecing and it together. And I got together. the triple word score with a couple other little bonuses in there. Erudite. Yeah, that was a wrap. Before we get back to why you know everything, uh, how how did you get into into doing like cannabis as a profession? Well, you see here, I've been a drink slanger <laughs> since uh, about 1984. Actually, been a slanging drink since uh, 2001. Okay. Um, started consulting in cannabis in 2016. Yeah. Um, ethnobotany. I developed food programs for cancer patients and aid patients. This all still happening while I'm a bartender for my day job. Right. Um, and well, then after a few upsets and changes in business and management and partnership, I decided, you know, what, what better way to edge into this very new frontier that's globally becoming explosive. Yeah, the cannabis yeah, yeah, industry yeah, yeah. is ridiculous right now. Yeah. Um, I have all of this process, all of this data, this raw data, um, from how your plants grow to what to feed your plants to what better to feed your plants to how to reduce pests, how to go non-pesticide. Um, combine that with my ethnobotanical background where I know a lot of the actions of these plants in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And then I've been bartending for so long. So I was like, well, what if I just edge into consulting since I can build the bar from the ground up, I yeah. can CAD the plants for yeah. the, I can do the menu, I can do everything for it and even supply the training for the staff. Yeah. What if we did that? In a canicentric way. Ah, yeah. yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you think? Uh, sort of like the way that you grew up. Did it? It. It made you capable of, sort of being like you're really inventive. Like with the the drinks that you have, yeah. with with what you wear, the things that you talk about, everything else. Was that? Was that sort of fundamental? Did you learn that that young, or was there something else that came along where you're like, wait? This is going to change everything, right? Like, did you have an experience where you decided? I mean, I like, wouldn't call it a lesson. Be, yeah. But there's conditioning in life, right? Like, we have environmental conditioning. I mean, I'm not the the proponent who's like, you're a product of your environment, you're right. a product of the conditions in which you were under, but they play a significant effect on what you see of the world, um, your exposure, and more importantly, how you apply the things that you've learned. Yeah. And so, a lot of my condition, I didn't have brand new things. I had. Uh, yard sale, garage sale. I mean, like my TV didn't work unless it was turned on its side. Didn't have color, but maybe five minutes out of a 24 hour period. Yeah. You never knew which. If you watch black and white long enough, it seems like it's in color. It's if okay, you watch right? Color, yeah. And then and now, the color kicks in. I'm like, that's right. It's black and white. And then it's gone again. No, I agree. I, like, I agree. Like, you're right. You're not, you're not a product of your environment, but you, 
it's like it's like we we learn how to survive a certain right. way. And however we learn how to survive, our bodies, our brains, everything else, like keep doing that. Right. Whatever it is, keep doing that. And it could be good, it could be bad, it could, like good, bad, healthy, unhealthy, whatever it is. But this is how you survive. Right. And so a lot of like there's a lot of great um, traits that come with that, like constantly studying, being a student always, right. right? Or learning how to disarm people in a situation with humor or caring about like you or with those are all mitts. tactics that's right? my favorite with your mitts <laughs> with my disarmament with the mitts just pull <laughs> it right all off that's all learn, this drink all more to milk survive. here's your arm back <laughs> yeah that's that's, that's that's also possibly a positive way of learning how to survive that's a, the rocky balboa way you know an awful lot about an awful lot of things um and we've talked about this and on the show just before. awful <laughs> yeah well, well how, how and why like do you just not shut off. So if you go, like when you go home tonight, you you know you, you you unwind, you relax, you hang out with some friends or whatever it is, and then you hop on Wikipedia and just go to town. You got like encyclopedias. So in your, in I your am place. a fan of doing true research. I'm definitely big into theoretical sciences. So my unwind yeah. is reading metaphysics books. Yeah. My work is reading applied metaphysics books, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. there's definitely a part where I'm relaxing and it seems like I'm still working because I'm still doing research on what I do when I'm doing applied work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, for me, I mean, I, I, I look cool as hell, don't I? <laughs> that being said, I was a super geek and a bully as a kid. Weird combination, wow. right? Like I was the kid who stayed in studying quantum physics, reading Machiavelli, The Prince, yeah, oh, yeah, learning yeah, about yeah. how to manipulate entire societies with the truth, but not the truth. And then at the same time, I'd go to school and people would try to make fun of my clothes. So I was a fifth grader fighting eighth graders on a, and winning. With your mitts. And winning. Yeah. And third graders would be like, oh, you look really cool. Shut up. Give me your damn <laughs> celery and your Oreos. Wait, wait, wait. And then the eighth graders would be like, well, he's a bully too. And so I'd go beat up some more eighth graders for their better stuff like their video games and stuff like i'll beat you up if you don't bring something better bring zelda tomorrow you're not like this now no oh, i'm still a geek no but like the like the bully figure that's what the drinks are for <laughs> <laughs> here's another one what are we... no no i paid my dad this is on me <laughs> okay now so it's in you what are what are we i even hesitate to go here at this point but we <laughs> we do need to drink uh what are we? What are we? What are we drinking? Uh, what are we drinking tonight? You're gonna find out because you're gonna make it. Uh, yeah. 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 Wait, really? Yeah, really, really. You're gonna make this drink. It's a um, combination of a black Manhattan, a green point, and a mezzo mezzo. Yeah. Okay, I'll make it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk about because you got plenty of to talk about. Uh, but while we're doing that, yeah, you're gonna you, build us a drink. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build us a drink. Um, no, wait, is there proper etiquette? Is there like a way I'm supposed to put my hands? Yeah, Ooh. like a doctor. That's right. Yep, doctor. doctor. Glove, up. Glove up, doctor. 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 Okay. Doctor. 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 Mezzo, 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 mezzo. Mezzo, 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 mezzo. So right okay. next to you, you have a bottle of Yerga Chefe um, Ethiopian coffee infused apricot liqueur. This? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna want a quarter ounce each, and since you're mixing up them both at the same time, just pour a half ounce. Pour a half ounce in yeah. this one right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And we're gonna follow that that uh, prescription. Okay. On over. Uh, green chartreuse in the front of green. your lazy Susan. There I you got go. it. Okay. Green chartreuse. Quarter ounce of that for each of us, so we're gonna do the half ounce thing again. Okay, half Now ounce. this is about 110 proof. This, this is here? For Abbey liqueur. So Abbey, Abbey meaning from like a- Like monks, well, yeah, monastery. Monk, a monastery. Yeah, monastery, all right. Right next to that you have uh, our Capano Antica Vermouth, red top. This one here? No, this one here. Yeah, All right. and it's the same thing, a quarter ounce each, so we'll do a half ounce. Well, I like that poppy sound, man. You're doing it, you're doing it. Okay. Now uh, next to that chartreuse you have Maletti. This one here? Yeah. This one has saffron in it. Yeah, you remember. I remember. A little bit of violet. It's got some floral notes. Now we're going to jump into uh, the Calvados. OK. All right, yeah. this here. Same thing, quarter ounce each, half Man, ounce all together. Mixy, mixy. It's like, yeah. OK. There. OK. OK, we're going to do, do our written house now. Hey, you know what? When you, when we do the show, you make drinks specific to the guests. You're the guest. Yeah. Or is this specific to me in this no, case? No, this is definitely what I would drink for me. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, let's do one dash of orange bitters. Right oh, it's right here. Yeah. 
The bitters for neck beards. <laughs> All right, what do I do with this? So you want to uh, you want to give it uh -huh. one, two hard dashes. Oh, it's just yeah, dash it hard. This is what yeah. makes it a cocktail. Yes. All right. The bitters. That's a dr boom. Yeah. Whoa. Good job. And do another one. Yeah. There you go. I'm so awkward. Dashing like a pro over here. Okay. 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 All right. Now we have some aromatic bitters with a vanilla bean. It's got a bean. Yeah. In it. Ah. Put Scrappy's a bean in Scrappy's aromatic it. bitters. Some of my favorite. Okay. Um. And it's got a vanilla bean in it. So give it that 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 dash you just did. Uh. And another one. Uh. And another one. Are you gonna do it Come again? Come on. You're yeah. You know I'm gonna do it. You're gonna. Uh. And one more. <laughs> Uh, uh. That's what I'm talking about. A little James Brown in there. Go ahead and dump that in there. Why not? I put this into here. Yeah. Okay. And now here's the cool part. We're going to stir together because this is a lesson in and of itself. We yeah. have several spoons here. I'm going to take this one. Take the one that's right take there. Take this one here. Now uh, take it like you're writing, but in between your middle fingers. Okay. And right. so the stirring technique, you want to keep the back of that spoon against the thing. It looks like you're just back and forth. And now use your wrist. You should feel it spin a little bit. It does. There you go. Ah. I probably, you know, I got it. Why careful about the way you do it? Well, you don't want to aerate the drink too much. I don't want like the bubble bubbles coming Yeah, up, right? yeah. Too much oxygen changes the flavor profile, can bring out aromatics and that that you normally wouldn't taste there. Okay. Now here's the fun part. Okay. Got a lid here. Do I set the spoon Go ahead and put that on. Yeah, set okay. the spoon down. We've got two glasses there. Yeah, oh. look at that. Okay. We've got garnish. Okay. So over here to the side you have some candied tangerines. Okay. Yeah. Go Do ahead and grab it. Out? Yeah. Yep. Put your fingers on it. Okay. Right in the top. Just throw it in there? Yeah, just let make sure that the round part's facing to the bottom. Yep. Round part to the bottom. Yeah, it's more likely to float that way. All right. Go. Yeah. And we're going to add a cherry to the top of each of those. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. we got a floater! Yeah, so instead of sitting down, because we poured it up to the room. Nice, nice. On this type of stuff. Yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit about like when you got when you got started putting this stuff together, or even just got into, even before you tended bar. Like, what would you say were some of your or you? Oh, oh I'm, I'm snapping your your first snap drink. Snap it! I like that. It's All like right. A, we're like a, it's like a holy moment. Like we're just like, hmm, please be quiet while we take the picture. Okay, perfect bartender flip. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, can can we get that in there? This is actually your bio flick as a bartender. That's Sean it. Sean Funder. Sean Funder, the happy bartender. Now, now, now the uh, happy bartender, he's laughing in this. He's like, you're getting drunk. I'm the inflatable, <laughs> flailing, waving arm guy. <laughs> <laughs> I still use cars on the weekend. So, like most bartenders do. <laughs> <laughs> what What would you say are some of the... The like things where you'd say like it was a misstep, but something that you learned, like when you're kind of on your own, or like things that you'd say like ah, I, I f***ed that up, or that was like hard to like go through or overcome. Well, I've got a lot of those. First, I'd like to preface that with saying that I guess with every f up, it's only really, really a f up if you don't recover. Yeah, you don't. If get you don't up, recover yeah. from it, a f up turns into your. F yeah. And I don't have too many of those moments to speak on. I, I'm I'm extraordinarily resilient. I was built for hard work, and I've taken quite a few ass whoopings in my life and gave back twice as hard as I got. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have mistakes that I've made, f ups that have happened that uh, everybody just looked at each other like this, like, yeah, that's a that's a wrap. Yeah. Uh, one, I was a special labor, and I was doing demo. But on this one particular uh, remediation gig uh, in Kingsgate. So working there, I, I was doing this job and they were like, we need somebody to build steps on the side of the house so that we can get all of our men up to that particular side. Yeah. And there's a door on the side of the house that we need to get in and out of. But the owner lost the key some huge time ago and he was like, just cut it off. And so they tell me to just cut it off. I have never cut a doorknob off of a door or a door <laughs> off the hinges before, right? And I was like, well, why not just remove the door? They're like, because it's a security door and it's metal. Just cut the doorknob off. Yeah. And they hand me a reciprocating saw, also known as the Sawzall, because it saws 
all. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. And I'd never used a Sawzall at this point. Right. Never had a use for it. I'm circular saw, table saws. Most of my stuff is like framing and finish work. I've got no need to use a Sawzall for most things, <laughs> right? So they hand me this thing, which is like a jackhammer you hold sideways. And the blade does this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real yeah. fast. And I'm like, this is up. They want me to cut a doorknob off with this? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I look at one of the other guys who's who's like with me, not a supervisor. Yeah. He's like, they told you to do it. Just do it. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right. So I, I angle the sawzall and I turn it on. It's scraping against the door. And I'm like, okay, they want the knob off. So I, I dive into it and I saw off the top of the knob. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. now there's no knob, but there's still a plate. And now I can see the inner workings and I'm like, yeah. I still got to saw off the plate too. So now, now I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable and I've got mm-hmm. the blade pressed mm-hmm. against it. It's even bending. That's the cool thing about yeah, a sawzall yeah, yeah, is you yeah, can yeah, saw yeah. weird angles and what? stuff, right? So the blade is bending and still doing this. So I get the doorknob off. I go straight to my supervisor. Here's the doorknob. He's like, dude, you cut it in half? I'm like, you told me to cut it off. He was like, yeah, um, but not in half. Still never clarified. And I made that face right there. Like, well, what the fuck did you think I was? I don't, right, right. I don't do really get do? the instruction now. Yeah, yeah. And so he comes and looks at the door and he sees all this, dude, you scraped up the door. You gave me a sawzall and wanted me to cut off a metal doorknob from a metal door. And he was like, well, we weren't supposed to mess the door up. How are you gonna get the door off with the sawzall and get the door, how do you get the doorknob? So I don't know whatever happened after that because he looks at me and he's like, do you know how much that door costs? Oh, no, no, no. So the guy's looking at me, he's like, we don't have that in our budget. So I can take it out of your check, but I can't keep you working on a job where you become a financial liability. Oh, no. So I got fired from a demo job. You got fired from a demo job. All right, we need need a drink. Wait, wait, what do we drink like a bartender? What's another one? We did Korean. We've done Japanese. Have we we done uh, Croatian? I don't think so. Uh, Nastrove. 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 Okay, okay. Mm. Such a weird glass, isn't it? This is good. The wh- what's the one part again? It was bourbon. No. What was the one part? Rye. rye. Whiskey rye. Bottled in bond rye, aged four years in a government watched warehouse. All right, I'm learning all sorts of things. Jack, what? I do have a big question because I think you have a good answer for it. There are a lot of people out there that are they're kind of like making money on the side so that they can do something that they really want to do or do something they want to love that they want to be an artist they want to be an actor they want to start their own nonprofit, like those types of things right. like if you could sit down with somebody and kind of have let them have like a, a therapy session you were going to give them advice or whatever and you could uh you could hang out with them for you know five minutes like what would you tell them if you want to live the life you want to live it starts with what you want um Figuring out what's useful for other people helps, um, especially if you want to be plugged into your community and have a healthy community. That's really all you actually need. Don't be afraid to do what you're good at. And don't be afraid to get good at something that you're unfamiliar with. Uh, A lot of people find out they're good at things accidentally. There's a lot of people who are working in positions because they think they have to maintain that job, maintain that credit score average. Right. But they don't know why. They think, oh, well, this is stability, but they don't know what that means mm-hmm. for them. I think, that, I think that's spot on. I mean, the hardest thing in the world is figuring out, it's a lot of times just figuring out what you want. Like that takes an yeah. extraordinary amount of honesty that I don't think a lot of people, myself included at different points in my life, like, like safety in a lot of cases or the sense of safety yeah. in a lot of cases is easier than, than honesty. You know what we should do? We should do an entire show about getting drunk <laughs> That would be great. That's it. Right? All right, here, here. To that one, cheers. To that man. one, cheers. Jack, I'm just gonna keep seeing you, so I don't need to be like, maybe I'll see you around sometime. All right, before we go though, let's take a shot. One more shot? One more shot. All right, a shot's just- If you're gonna, if you're gonna be a bartender- Straight drink, You gotta that's drink it. like a bartender. Right? Okay, one more shot. What are we doing? You want to do that uh, Benedictine? And, oh, no. Nope, nope. Chartreuse? Chartreuse is yeah. right where? You make the shot. Oh, 
This is gonna be easy. All you right, sure? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So you put them in here. You're gonna be mad because you're a bartender, and I'm gonna make the easiest shot you've ever had. Oh, great. Is it just chartreuse? It's just chartreuse. Oh, jeez. Okay. You're just gonna make the shot. Just, just so you know, there's bartenders watching this right now who are applauding this entire situation. Really? They're applauding. They're like, Yo, they're doing shots of chartreuse. That's what we do. That's what we do. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> here, I'll give you the little one because I'm right. used to it. Okay, cool. It's a. Sh oh, and the way I toast. Okay. To Michael Blackman, I love you. He's the guy who, who gave me this toast. It's a song he wrote to himself a long time ago. Okay. To water when you're thirsty, to whiskey when you're dry, to a shotgun when you need one, <laughs> and nothing when you die. Salud. Salud. Oh, that's right. Tap it. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> that's, that's what we do. <laughs> it's not stopping. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Click all the buttons down below. Subscribe, like us, follow us, stalk us electronically and otherwise. <laughs> and uh, if you want to be on the show, try F F Ups. F Ups.com. <laughs>